I only have one other thing I want to hit on, and it's, again, it's not a direct matchup, but it's comparing Michigan defense, Ohio State defense. And I think this is just indicative of the two programs and the way they recruit, sign players, who they attract. I think this is very indicative. And folks, if you care about these such things, I did a video where I compared they've lined up against six common opponents now, the entire division plus Iowa. And it's kind of interesting to size it up when you look at it that way. And I know we got to put it everything into context. Of course, it's not just about numbers, but uh, when you, when you add it all up, their effectiveness against those six opponents is almost exact on defense. If you watch them play though, Michigan is collectively a better defense, like down in down out. They're consistent. Ohio State has gashes, leaks, they give up plays, da da da. But it's like they got a five star that shows up like every, like a few times a game, whether it's Zach yeah. Harrison or JT Tuimoloau, most famously against Penn State, where he just takes the game over. And the dudes in the secondary that are just, you know, Tommy Eichenberger is having a, a ridiculous year where they just like about five times a game just have like a five-star show up and like strip the ball out or pick off a pass or that they're more like up and down. We'll make spectacular plays, yeah. but we'll give up big plays versus Michigan, just kind of grinding it out, doing their job, getting the, the other team off the field. Yeah. I, and that, that is like the key to what they call the no star defense, right? They, that's what they're calling it. And it's turning into no stars, they're all stars in yeah. their own way, you know, it, it, that's what it's turning into. Um, it, it's one of those things where it's somebody new every single week that is the star. Um, you know, it turned out to be Mason Graham was, was a big piece on uh, a fresh, you know, true freshman in the middle of the, the defense because Mozzie Smith is out. And so um, I agree with that. And I think that, you know, I, I think that plays to Michigan's advantage in this game because, Ohio State just wants to, like, hit, hit the deep ball, get the big play, right? That, that's what they thrive on. If Michigan, you know, were to play like Ohio State does, where it's like we get gashed and then we make a big play, I think you end up getting gashed more often against Ohio State. But the fact that Michigan is so consistent, and if they play like they did last year, where it's like keep the ball in front of you, you know, keep them contained. It, you know, we'll take if they want to get eight, 10 yards, that's fine, but don't let them get 48, you know, that type of thing. I think that that's where Michigan wants to play this game. And then in the red zone is where it's really key. That was the key to last year was keeping Ohio State out of the red zone or out of the end zone multiple times in the first half. Otherwise, it's going to be 21, you know, 13 at halftime. Uh, so, or 20 and 14, whatever it was. And so, you know, I, I think that's the key is, is keeping them out of the end zone and not letting that big play happen. Justin Rowe, blue by 90.com Wolverine plus anything you want to let us know, Justin, about obviously this is the week that not only Ohio state and Michigan fans come together, but there are college football nerds out there that just want to know about this game. And so yeah. uh, what do you guys have available? We have, so on Wolverine uh, dot plus, if you go to Wolverine dot plus tonight, it's all free for this entire week. Um, rivalry week we've got the the programming tonight we've got john colasar and caden colasar on um to to talk a little father-son action about the game two guys that have played in this game obviously john colasar um is a legend of this game from, from yeah he broke my heart in 1988 <laughs> yes 1988 yeah. was the year yes. um and then you know his son uh, obviously caden has been uh he's been injured which has sucked but um, still was a big piece of the the special teams last year. And um, so that's going to be very fun for them to talk and just chat it up. Um, and uh, we'll have Taylor Luan on again this uh, this uh, Wednesday, I believe, as well. Um, so having some really cool stuff on Wolverine.plus. Uh, and then at Blue by 90, we've got coverage all week long as well. So um, covering, you know, the game, covering these guys. Uh, we're we're very excited about, about I mean, this is – I. There's nothing – if you're focusing – if you're a Michigan or Ohio State fan and you're focusing on anything else this week, you're, you're a liar. Because <laughs> my mind has been there from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep. Absolutely. And a little bit during the night too. <laughs> Absolutely. There's just nothing like it. I, I was trying to explain to somebody the other day, and they, they just didn't quite get it, but I think they can believe it coming out of my mouth, that growing up in this rivalry and watching this game every year, this game meant more to me than anything. It meant more than Ohio State – 
you know, it meant more than those rankings, you know, somebody being the AP number one voted national champ. This, this game, I don't care what the records were. Uh, this always meant more than anything. Absolutely. That's why I, I've got this behind me this week. I, you know, we, I had to, had to bring it out. Oh, wow. Uh, Hassan jumping over the pile. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to manifest some stuff to, to happen again. <laughs> um, here going on, distance. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I, I will be in Columbus. I'll be heading down there uh, Friday for the game. So um, if anybody uh, hits me up in the DMs and wants to meet up, please let me know. We'll, we'll have some Michigan fans there. I'm trying nice. not to get beat up. I'm just yeah. trying to, I'm trying to make it out of there a lot. For whatever reach we have here, Ohio State fans, I know that there, there are many that will watch this. Be, be nice to Justin. Be kind. You know, you I'm can hate guy. him for three and a half hours, but you're not going to sit there and watch the game with him. So before the game, after the game, whatever, be be civil, be nice. I can, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm all here for some friendly trash talk. Um, <laughs> I said go blue to a guy. I was in Ford Field for the Bills game. Bills Browns yesterday, which was actually very fun and loud. How many people um, were there? There was like 50, 60,000 people there. Spoiler. It was packed. Okay. It was absolutely packed. Um, it was very fun. But I, there was an Ohio State or a guy wearing Ohio State, and I just did a little, hey, go blue, you know, on the way out. And he's like, F you. I was like, man, I'm just trying to, like, can we have a little, like, banter here? You know, it doesn't need to turn into us, like, at each other's throats immediately. So, um, <laughs> I get it. I get it. It's it's uh you know it's a triggering hot topic. I get it, but um yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make it out alive. I'll, I'll if I if you don't hear from me next week, you know what happens. Okay, Buckeye fans, <laughs> be nice, be kind. Come on, Justin. We always appreciate this great conversation and uh, enjoy the trip to Columbus. Don't enjoy it too much, but enjoy the trip to Columbus. And uh, I appreciate it. Soon. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me.